Welcome to Heart of the Shepherd. As we continue our study of the Gospels, we are today in the book of John, the Gospel of John, and our scripture reading is chapter 3. And I've titled the devotional, He Must Increase, But I Must Decrease. Now, today's study does include both beloved and familiar verses of the New Testament. In fact, arguably the best or most well-known verse in all of the scriptures may well be John chapter 3 and verse 16. And so I realize that most of you listening to this video devotional need a little guidance to grasp and appreciate the spiritual truths that we find here. Nevertheless, John chapter 3, in my opinion, is a wonderful, pivotal uh, chapter in our study of the scriptures. And so, if you would, open your Bible with me to John chapter 3, where we have what I'm subtitling, The New Birth. Now, we'll consider, first of all, a Christ conversation with Nicodemus. Now, we meet him in John chapter 3, verses 1 through verse 21. Now, a little bit of the setting. The growing popularity of Christ's ministry uh, drew many to inquire of him, and among them was a powerful, influential man named Nicodemus. Now, he is introduced to us in verse 1 as a man of the Pharisees, a ruler of the Jews, and was therefore a member of the Sanhedrin. Now, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, we read, and said unto him, Rabbi, which means teacher, we know that thou art a teacher, come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. John chapter 3 and verse 2. Well, Jesus answered Nicodemus in verse 3, saying, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, evidencing his sincerity, Nicodemus pressed Jesus and asked in verse 4, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Well, Jesus again answered, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's verse 5. Now, though he, Nicodemus, was a spiritual leader in Israel, we find here that he lacked understanding. And so in verse 9, he asked again, how can these things be? Now, to that question, Jesus spoke the words that have brought multitudes to saving faith and eternal life. And so in John chapter 3 and verse 14, we read, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now the reference there is to Numbers chapter 21 and verse 8, where the, uh, the people were being judged by God, and serpents were attacking them or biting them, and many were dying. And so God commanded Moses to craft a serpent of brass and then to lift it up. And the people who looked to the serpent, that brass image, would be saved. Well, it is that image now that is the illustration for Christ's own death on the cross. Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. And so we read in verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And then this wonderful verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, I want to pause and invite you to subscribe to heartofashepherd.com and there you'll find a written uh, version of this video devotional. But also, you're going to find that there are links to other prior devotionals from the Old Testament that will give you greater understanding regarding this reference to the serpent in the wilderness. Now, the parallel, obviously, as I've already stated, was that the Son of Man, being Jesus Christ, would be lifted up. And that served as Christ's invitation for sinners to look to Him and His sacrifice on the cross as the way of salvation. And so let's consider what became of Nicodemus 
after his encounter with Jesus. Well, we find him later contending with members of the Sanhedrin who desired to arrest Jesus so that they might silence him. You find that in John chapter 7 and verse 50. And so as the, the plot of the Sanhedrin was to arrest Jesus and ultimately to kill him, so it was that Nicodemus, this one that came by night, intervened for him at that time. Also, when Christ was crucified, we meet Nicodemus again, for he had joined Joseph of Arimathea to claim his, that is Christ's, lifeless body and prepare it for burial. That's recorded in John 19. Now, we do not know if Nicodemus publicly identified with Jesus during his ministry. Still, he certainly made his following known upon Christ's death. Now, switching to another setting, we find in verses 22 through 36, John the Baptist's conversation with his disciples, that is, his followers. Now, some who followed John the Baptist realized Jesus had overshadowed his ministry. That is, as, as Jesus' popularity was growing, he was gaining a greater following. And so John's followers, John the Baptist's followers, were concerned that Christ's ministry was eclipsing his. And so they said of Christ in John chapter 3 and verse 26, all men come to him. John, however, attributed the success that both he and Christ experienced as a gift from heaven, John 3 and verse 27. And then he reminded his followers in verse 28, I said... I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. Well, with that admission, John the Baptist made a statement that should resonate in the hearts of all believers, tempted to think they deserve recognition. For John said of Christ in verse 30, He must increase, but I must decrease. Now, the last words of John the Baptist were recorded in John 3, verse 31 through 36. And there he bore testimony that Christ spoke with the authority of one that had come from heaven. Now, the very words spoken by Christ were, in verse 34, the very words of God. Now, he was, verse 35, the Son whom God the Father loveth and hath given all things, that is, all authority, into his hand. Well, John the Baptist's conversation with his disciples concluded with this testimony in verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Well, allow me some closing thoughts. I want to close today's Bible study with an observation and an invitation. Now, sincere believers should accept the Baptist's loving observation, he must increase, but I must decrease, as our goal. Ours is not to build a following, but to point sinners to Jesus Christ. After all, is that not the ministry of every preacher, teacher, and believer? Finally, a sinner's hope of eternal life is in Jesus Christ. Now, to believe is to have the promise of everlasting life. However, verse 36, to reject Christ, a sinner faces the inevitable wrath of God and eternal judgment. And so I close inviting you to look to the cross, which represents Christ's suffering and death for your sins. And through the eyes of faith, believe that He, Christ, was crucified for your sins, died and rose from the dead. In the words of Christ, as the uh, Jewish people, the Hebrews, were dying in the wilderness and had to look to the brass serpent that they might live, I encourage you to look to the cross. Look and live. Well, thank you for being a part of the Heart of the Shepherd. And bye-bye.